Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, Go So Beautiful. My name's Becky and it's so time. Thanks for tuning in everyone. Today is Friday and it's time for another episode of Friday Sews where I like to talk about things I've been working on in my sewing room and things I'm going to work on and a little bit about life. So Friday Sews was started by Jen from Today in Jen's Sewing Room. She created a hashtag that anyone with a YouTube sewing channel could, could use to share their sewing experiences. So let me tell you what I did in my sewing room this week. If you were with me last week, you remember I talked about my Make Nine plans and I think I shared a little bit about my Pietra pants. Well, I finished the Pietra pants and the real test of how well something fits is wearing it, actually wearing it. So today I had to go somewhere and I wore these pants and here, here they are and I'll put a picture of me. It's not a great picture but I had trouble getting pictures today. I think my hair is on strike. Anyway, they're too big. Um, I can pinch up in this center seam about an inch to an inch and a half. So I need to take that in. So I have to say that in spite of the fact that they don't really fit, I do like the style of these pants and I'm not going to give up, but I'm not going to be making them for a while because I'm tired of them. <laughs> I get that way sometimes. The other thing I wanted to share is this top I mentioned this, I think, before Christmas. I don't know if I mentioned it last week or not, but it had, um, it's a nice stretch velvet top that I made kind of last minute. I bought this as a remnant from Joann's and it had terrible pressure marks in it. And a, a few people said they thought those were designed in the fabric, but they really, they really didn't look good on me. So I soaked it in just cold water and I gently wrung it out and laid it out to dry on some towels. And then I took it, I think it was still a little bit damp, but I brought it down to my sewing room and turned it inside out and I used my iron on I think kind of a medium steam setting with a press cloth I ironed the back of it and darn it if those lines didn't come out so there's still kind of a few marks in it but here's a picture of me wearing it I think it's really pretty I might take this collar off and shorten it a little bit because it does hang out but I kind of like that but it's so fun to wear. It's, it's, it's so soft and it just, you kind of want to pet, pet yourself when you're wearing it. I won't do that. Anyway, I was very pleased that this is something I can wear now. The third thing I worked on this week is this top. I was a little bit tired of some of the things I've been sewing and decided I wanted to, um, make a top for myself and this fabric I had actually made a dress back in the summer and I'll put a link to that video and the dress turned out to look like a sack on me so I had this fabric it was hanging up and just kind of staring at me and I thought I'm going to make a top out of that and I used the Love Notions La Bella Donna tee with the hoodie on it, the hood on it. And it can also be made in a tunic. Here's a picture of the pattern. And 
It comes in sizes extra small to 5X, and it has shirt in tunic lengths with the full bust option, three sleeve options, short three quarter length and long sleeves. You can make it with a hood, a cow neck, or pocket options. It also has pocket options. So initially I thought I would make the tunic, but because I had cut the fabric into the dress initially and then I did I had some left over but it wasn't enough it just wasn't enough to make a tunic so I ended up making the shirt length and I did want long sleeves so um, it's got grown on sleeves and then you add a cuff and this cuff is pretty long and for the hood you have the option of lining it or not lining it and this fabric is white on the back so I really didn't want to have the if it had been almost the same print on the other side I probably would have left it but I didn't I didn't want the white to show so I searched and I didn't really want to line it with this fabric because I didn't have enough for one thing and um, I thought it was a little too heavy so I searched and searched and at first I was going to use an old t-shirt and that would have worked out great except the t-shirt had some coffee stains on it <laughs> and I tried to get them out with some bleach soap with bleach and all I did was bleach the fabric out and the cough the stains were still there so that didn't work so I looked through all of my fabric and I found this pink jersey knit cotton knit in a kit that I had purchased from Craftsy several years ago never made up and I thought I remembered the dress was black it was like a black wrap dress with a red and pink border on it I think and I thought, well, I don't really want to put red and pink together. So I took this pink fabric and used it to make the lining. And um, I'll stand up so you can see how it looks. It's pretty, um, it's a little bit short and I, it's a little bit snugger than I want it to be. But um, I really like the way this came out and think it's cute. The hood is a little bit tricky to... Oops, I know that probably just made some noise. The hood is a little bit tricky to the way it lays. I think if I were going to make this again, I might raise the neckline a little bit. Um, but I really like the way this came out. So that's most of what I made in my sewing room this week. Yesterday I came and I was just kind of tired and wasn't really sure what to make next. I have on my list of things to make the Marlowe sweater from True Bias and I was going to cut out a I was going to cut out a toile for it a wearable toile out of black fleece and I just I just couldn't do it so <laughs> I've put that aside for a minute I did cut out a pair of pajamas again I've made this is like my third pair of pajamas but I bought um, I wanted to make some knit pajamas and got them all cut out and then I really didn't feel like sewing those up either so I um, have a little side hustle there where I make some um, envelope bags envelope style bags for a friend of mine who makes collapsible camp stoves I'll put a link in the description box if you're interested and he said he needed some of those bags so I was like, great, that's mindless sewing, super easy. I'll whip some of those up and then I'll move on to my next project. So now that I've done that, I'm ready to move on to something else. And I might make those knit pajamas. I might do the Marlowe sweater, but I think I want to make another something else. And the thing that has come to mind is one of my make nine projects and that is 
the ermine blouse from fiber mood and I just think it's a unique looking blouse it's got a v-shaped yoke in the front that's gathered it's long sleeves and buttons down the front and I think it will be good to wear in the winter or as it transitions into spring now my fabric choices are the next decision which maybe y'all can help me with my first thought was this kind of I don't know what if that looks like the denim blue cornflower blue with this little white ditzy flowers and this is a double gauze which I got from Minerva last year and I just haven't sewn it up yet and I thought this would be a good choice the suggestions for the fabric um, say Ermine works well in all different kinds of fabric from drapey viscose like crepe and lyocell or silk to somewhat stiffer fabrics like poplin, chambray, lace or fine and fine or baby whale corduroy. And it's great in solids or prints. I thought I would this ditzy print would look really cute. My other choice is this rayon chalet which is a lavender color and it's got polka dots with these pretty little daisies on it I, I don't know if those are daisies or what I got this at fabric.com I think a year over a year ago and I love this color I think I was saving this for a dress so I'm hesitant to cut um, cut it and make it into a blouse because then I won't have enough for the dress so let me know in the comments what you all think I should use the blue ditzy floral double gauze or the lavender polka dot daisy rayon chalet I'll put a um, I'll put a, a note in the community tab so the next thing I want to talk to you all about is content. I would like to know what kind of content you would like to see on my channel. Uh, I know I mostly show things that I make and um, I have a few tutorials, but I would love to know what you are looking for in sewing channels. Would you like to see a sew along? Would you like to see more tutorials? Would you like to do a Q&A? And the last thing, which I may do anyway, is a handbag trunk show. I used to have a business making handbags and I still have some. And I thought it might be fun to show the handbags I've made and talk about the different patterns I use to make them so that maybe you would like to make a yourself at home leave a comment and let me know what you're interested in if you are interested in more than one thing list the most list them in order of importance in other words which one you'd like to see the most and so on i really appreciate that that would help me in making more videos and um, bringing you more relevant content so the last thing I want to talk about is a little bit about life. Um, this week was pretty boring. Um, we've been trying to track down a package from Amazon. <laughs> I ordered some little dumb, a set of dumbbells from Amazon and they were supposed to have been delivered by the post office and they we had a tracking number and the tracking number said they were left either in or beside our mailbox and had the date well they we never got them so I tried to use the tracking number to find out what was going on with the Postal Service and they finally got back to me and basically um, 
told us to call somebody else. Well, the number they gave us was, didn't work. It was like a fax number. And whoever called us didn't leave her name and didn't have a number. The callback number was a private number. So we had to call the post office, postal service again and open another ticket, which takes three to four days to investigate. And they said, we may get back to you next Thursday. <laughs> so then my husband said, I'm going to call Amazon. So he called Amazon, got another automated phone call, answered the questions. He said it took two minutes and they said, we'll send you another package. If the other package arrives in the meantime, you can refuse it and send it back. Problem solved, right? Other thing about Amazon is I ordered another, um, ordered some other things. I ordered some knit cuffing and I forget what the description said. I think it said polyester knit cuffing used for collars, sweatshirt cuffs, etc. So that package was coming from China and it got delayed and didn't think I was going to get it. Finally it arrived and this is not what I wanted. <laughs> it is definitely some kind of cuffing, very stretchy, but, and you can't see this on the camera, I'm sure, but it feels really stiff like nylon, um, like stuff that you would put on outerwear. And I wanted this for sweatshirts. So I have this dusty rose color and I've got this red and this, I think this is called purple. Anyway, I was hoping for a light lavender. And um, so I started a return and they, they said, well, you don't have to give, you don't have to send it back will refund your money. So now I have all of this knit cuffing. I have no, what to, no idea what to do with. Anyway, that's what you get when you, um, you have to be careful when you order fabric from, really from anywhere because um, the just, unless you really know from the description what it's gonna be like, you, you, you don't know what you're gonna get. And I frequently order samples, especially when I'm just not sure what, um, what the fabric's gonna be like and I don't wanna spend a lot of money. So it's worth it to me. I think you can pay, get a, a swatch from fabric.com for $3. And from Mood, I think they cost a little bit more, maybe $5, but if you're gonna be spending more than $10 a yard on fabric, I want to know what it's going to look like. So I highly recommend ordering samples. So that's about it for me today. I appreciate you watching and tuning in. I really love your hearing your comments and thank you so much for subscribing. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate you giving it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can see when I upload new videos. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Go so beautiful. Bye-bye.